Now, let's talk to um, Harold the H. Hark, hark, hark. And he, too, is a seahorse whisperer. Yes. And a ghost. And a ghost whisperer. Now, he's in a place called Hamilton, Victoria, and it's haunted. There's a school there, 1871. Let's cross down live to Victoria to Harold. G'day, Harold the H. Oh, good God. morning, Dan- uh- <laughs> good morning, Danny. It's cold and wet and spooky, but, uh, geez, a good story I've got to tell you today. Is that a fact? Is it cold? It's like, it's feeling like it's below zero, mm. and it's wet. It's it's just not Queensland, Danny. I, but I came down here. We've got to track down this lost Ipswich which history. Well, tell us all about it, will you? Because um, there's a bit of an Ipswich connection, isn't there? Yeah, that's right. It's, look, it's previously an unknown connection to Ipswich, and I'm looking right now at the magnificent old clock tower of the Hamilton and Alexandra College. It was founded in 1871, just like you said. Now we're looking at it. We're know, looking at it. We're looking at I'm it looking on the at web. It we're looking at it now. It's a lovely old church. It, it, it is. It's it's very nice. It's old school, and it's uh, drizzly. It's got that spooky. A uh, Harry Potter type feel. It's uh, it's got everything you want about this story. But you've switched now. Have you ever heard of Richard Kerr? Oh, I've heard of Sir John, his 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 uncle. Yeah, well, Richard Kerr. He was the longest serving headmaster in the history of Ipswich Grammar School. Really? Now he. Yeah, he was he was headmaster there for thirty years in nineteen fifteen to nineteen forty five. Mm. But what has seemingly been written out of Mister Kerr's history mm. is that just before that he was headmaster here at Hamilton College <laughs> for two years in nineteen thirteen and nineteen fourteen. Wow! Now I'm here to find out why the college has been left out of his history and to see if it has anything to do with a ghost that's rumoured to have been here at Hamilton College since the early 1900s. In other words, since the time that Mr Kerr was here. So he's been left now, out of the, the, the history of this uh, school? That's right. Well, he's been left out of the history. He's le- he has left the school out of his own biography. It's really? Not oh, and he was headmaster here for two years. Now, is that a shield on the side somewhere? Well, let's let's work it out because the ghost is reported to do odd things like <laughs> mysteriously opening and closing doors and, and peering in through windows. And it's colloquially called the ghost of Mary Esther. Oh. Now, sh- she's said to have been a teacher here who had an affair with a principal in the early 1900s. Mm. Now, allegedly, she fell pregnant, mm. after which he left her and she hanged herself oh. from the clock tower and she's still haunting the tower the tower today now i'm looking right at the clock tower now we can it's see spooky. it we're looking that. at it google it what's the name of the again uh what's the name of the school the, go- the school is hamilton and alexandra college hamilton now, and alexandra college now there have been five deaths known as to have happened here and they all happened right at this clock tower mm. because that's where the headmaster's quarters it's right next to it so mm. the school's inaugural headmaster he died there in 1895 mm. the father of the next headmaster in 1897 mm. a deputy headmaster in 1899 mm. a headmaster's infant son sometime after 1901 mm. and the father of a headmaster in 1911 Danny the hearse was just working flat out here for a period <laughs> it was just just chaos Mm. And all the headmasters covering the period involved that I'm looking at, they were all highly respected Victorian gentlemen. However, one of them stands out, and that's Ipswich's Mr. Kerr. Oh. Now, he came down from Ipswich in 1913 and returned to Ipswich the following year. In fact, his two years in charge is the shortest tenure in the first 50 years of this college's history. Mm. Now, Mr. Kerr himself was highly respected. His father was a Presbyterian minister. He was a moderator of the Presbyterian Church in Queensland. His grandfather was a justice of the peace who died fighting a bushfire in the Lockyer Valley. Now, when Mr. Kerr came to Hamilton College in 1913, he was 35 years old and married and brought with him two boys from Denmark Hill in Ipswich. They were the brothers Selwyn and Percy Outridge. Mm-hmm. Now, the older brother, Selwyn, the next year in 1914, mm-hmm. he became the school captain here in Hamilton. And at the end of that year, well, that's when Mr. Kerr took off back to Ipswich. Oh. So was Ipswich's Richard Kerr 
the headmaster responsible for the Hamilton College guys. Now, one, he was there right here during the right period in the 1900s, in the early 1900s. Mm. He left after just two years, so why was he the shortest serving headmaster in the first half century of the school's history? And his time at Hamilton College has been glossed over in his official history. In fact, his biography explains the two-year absence from Ipswich as being that he was studying a science degree in Melbourne University, but he'd already been head science teacher in Ipswich, so why would he need another degree? And he was, in fact, headmaster here. We've got that uh, in writing. Mm -hmm. And the two boys he brought with them from Ipswich, mm -hmm. their mother was named Esther. That's the same name as the Hamilton College oh. ghost. Now, there's no evidence that Mr. Kerr is responsible for their ghost. I don't want to be sued by his family. And he did return to Ipswich Grammar to become a, one of the most respected principals in Queensland. So, Danny, I've got to finish. I, there were strange things that did happen at Ipswich Grammar back then. Mm. You see, Mr. Kerr's first position at Ipswich mm. was as head science and maths teacher and deputy headmaster, <laughs> which is a role he took over in 1900 from the previous deputy headmaster, his name was Edward Wilson. Now, if you've heard of him, Danny, Wilson departed the school in sensational circumstances. He was charged with the murder of a 15-year-old boy at Goodner. Mm. Those charges were later dropped, but he was successfully convicted of immoral acts with another boy and sentenced to seven years imprisonment. Mm. So who is responsible for the ghost of Mary Esther here in country Victoria? Look, we'll never know, but... But like I said earlier, I'm down here with one of our listeners, Craig, mm -hmm. the Muddy Creek Picker. We're going to be finding out. We're going to be looking for history. So I'll be posting pictures of, of what I'm finding here, Danny. We've got to get to the bottom of this mystery. Wow, mate, you built up a story. Your researching is a brilliant. What about the bloke who's the bell ringer up there and got hit in the head with the bell and fell down the, off the bell tower? And there's a big crowd gathered around him. And then does anyone know who this is? But a bloke in the back said, oh, the face rings a bell. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you built that story up well. I was, I was uh, just waiting to know what was happening there. <laughs> Anyhow, mate, historyoutthere.com. This bloke is a genius. He built that story. He's one of the great storytellers. And you'll only hear him here on West Bremer Radio. So download the app. It's 8.31. Here is the news.